So, this is the last podcast of the season. Not the last podcast ever. Last podcast of the season. Um, you know, it was a. I think there were thirteen or fourteen episodes in in our for, first year. Our first year, first season. Nice. You know, um, um, before we started the podcast, I, w- I was kind of kicking around the idea that we talk about the pandemic, and uh, and then you since they reminded me that the pandemic. I think of the pandemic as starting in March of two thousand twenty because as a lawyer, that's when the avalanche of crap from the pandemic hit my practice in America. In America. But of course, you're right. The pandemic started sometime in the fall of 2019 in in Asia, um, and so um, one. I, I want to just say to everyone out there who's been, who's part of our community, um, thank you for being part of our community, and thank you for supporting the dojo, and thank you for supporting Aikido. And so I just want to say, you know, I'm very thankful to everyone, but I want to wish everyone a really happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Uh, I think this is a, you know, it's we should be especially thankful this year for those of us who are still around because the world lost a lot of people in the last two years. Yeah. The pandemic is the uh, undisputed champion. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, the, the, the what do they say? The, the four undef- um, undefeated opponents, time, age, old injuries, mother nature, and the fifth one, pandemic. Now is the pandemic. <laughs> you know, it's like... Man, what a disturbance it's caused in the force. Absolutely. You know, that it changed so much, good and bad. I mean, for me, it was nothing but good. I mean, yeah. you know, I didn't have anyone who passed away in, in my life. Yeah. I didn't have, um, you know, a, a really adverse reaction. I closed my business. I started a business. We started doing these podcasts, these videos. I mean, we found another gear doing during this pandemic. Yeah. Absolutely. I, mean, like I think all the additional skills you developed, yeah. you know, how to, how to edit videos, how to use film equipment. You know, I got into really heavy duty and do my leather work during that whole time frame, developed that skill set. So I don't know if those things would have ever taken place if it wasn't for the yeah, pandemic. I never would have learned how to film these things or do a podcast. Well, it's funny because you and I, since I have been talking for years before the pandemic about how we needed to be, we needed to have media. We need to have media content. And we would sit around saying, we don't know how to go about doing it. We don't have the time. We don't have the energy. And then, bam, this yeah. happened. And in March of 2020, we were sh- basically shut down Yeah, for that a short period of Friday time. Friday the 13th in March 2020. Yeah. So, so it kind of forces you into, well, plus since you're not going to work, it gives you some spare time to develop the skill set, but also forcing you have to make these changes because we didn't have people coming to the dojo. Yeah. We had uh, to find ways to engage our community, st- our community, our students. We had z- zoom. Well, I was going to say the zoom had- chat, I think in some ways was the precursor to the podcast. Yes. It was sort so of it, like the it, parent to the child. It would have been fun to have, uh, Recorded some Re- of those. Recorded some of those because we talked. We got on some off the wall topics. <laughs> yeah, and it's generally me and Watanabe Sensei talking about all kinds of stuff. And people listening. Some people like that style. Some people did not. Some people felt like they wanted to talk more. Yeah, those were especially hard for me because if no one came on, I was like, if no one's on by seven, you're I'm off. off. Right, six fifty eight. Some person come on. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, and that person wants, and that person's got a drinky winky and wants to stay up until like eleven. And I was like. But, you know, oh I think that God. I think that the uh, the podcast, or not the podcast, but the uh, Zoom conversations really were valuable. I know that, um, you know, we've probably all known someone during the the pandemic who's had issues with depression, loneliness. Um, I know I've been going back into the office. I changed firms on uh, during the pandemic, uh, and I noticed in my new firm that more people are going into the office. But all what they all say, almost down to a single person is uh, how, like, as much as they like not commuting, it was lonely. Yeah, for me, it was hard because I had to, like, I have to wake up at 5 in the morning, no matter what time I went, went to bed, write my blog, do all this stuff. My kids wake up at, you know, like 7, get them up, get them fed, get them on Zoom by right. 7.55, and then I have to sit in this room, you know, with two kids Listening to them talk with their teachers and going, hey, hey, stop doing that. Hey, sit up. Right. Don't do that. Hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? 
So you're playing cop for the entire day. day. Yeah. And then, you know, so lunch comes, we, you know, my wife makes lunch. And then from there, I, we, kids and I are doing homework. And then you're just like exhausted from doing yeah. and you didn't do I, I wasn't productive at all. <laughs> yeah. You know, and people are like, well, why did you just do this? I go, I could, but then you look over and my, my kids laying on the ground, not in zoom <laughs> or, or you're, you know, I would try to do yoga in the other room and I would hear Sarah, Sarah, please come back on the screen and I have to run over there and be like, what are you doing? And she's like, Oh, I feel like going to the bathroom. And you're like, you have to ask per permission. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was, it was very, it was, I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about how to make things. You know, it was, it, it was a learning experience. So I've heard this, this talked about certainly in the, in the business world that I'm in, they call it the great reset. Oh yeah, it's told. It was totally a reset for me. I mean, I learned so much about Aikido during that time. I mean, I digitized all of Furu Sensei's magazines. You wow! Know, I digitized a, a bunch of his videos, and so you'd have to watch them while you're doing them. So you right. learn different things. So when you say you learned a bunch about Aikido, what 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 would you just picking a handful of things that might be valuable to? students that are not in our dojo that you might that you could talk about <clears throat> what do you think you could share with our non our non dojo listeners the thing which i learned the most is that there is no time left mm. you yeah know, i came into the pandemic in good shape skinnier healthier came out of the pandemic mentally healthier but in worse physical shape and i worked out like there's times where I did yoga every day. Wow. But I did no cardio because it just was I couldn't be on the treadmill and listen to my kids at the same time. Right. You know, and so, you know, but that as I turned 50 during the pandemic, my body just became so messed up. My hip flexors became tight. My low back became tight. Got this ankle injury that just I woke up with one morning. Hmm. And I was just like, wow, that's how easy it is for it to fall apart. Right. You know, and that there is no time left. And that, you know, Free Sensei, before he died, he would always threaten us. There's no time right, left. Right, say that. I'm going to close a dojo and just have <laughs> a small dojo at my home. I'm going to, you know, he would threaten us with all this. And I'd be like, come on. <laughs> but then today, I'm seven years from 58. Yeah. And since Free Sensei died at 58. And I think, what? Yeah. And the whole time, he's like, you thought of him as an old man. Yeah. Right. Because the yeah. way he acted. But like, the thing is, is that there's just no time left. There's, if you want to become uh, a leather worker, you got to do leather. it now. <laughs> you got to do it now. Yeah. There is no, well, I'm going to wait till next year. I'm going to, you know, in January, I'm going to start the scene. Don't wait. There, there, life is tenuous. There is no guarantee that there's going to be a tomorrow. And then you go, well, I'll pick up Aikido then. No, you won't. No. No, I think I think it's so it's so great that you're bringing this up because I think um, I know that that uh, it's 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 been in our dressing room for many years. The there is no time. The the, the the message it's right there. Every time you change, you look at it. There is no time, and you you get it in that sort of subliminal messaging level. Yeah. But bringing it up now in this discussion, I think is you're right. I mean, the 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 pandemic made people face existential reality. Yeah. Um, and a lot, I mean, a lot of people are changing jobs, they're changing their relationships, they're changing, um, the things that, that for their health. Um, I know for myself, like I lost during the two years, like maybe 15 pounds, 15 or 16 pounds. And, um, we came out of the pandemic in better shape than when I went into the pandemic. But part of that was because I no longer had to commute. And you became a, a pseudo vegetarian. I too. became a vegetarian for the most part. Yes. I mean, I will, if there's nothing else, I'm not, I'm not like so morally opposed to eating meat, but I pretty much don't eat it anymore. And it totally changed. Um, I mean, I, within like five months of switching my diet, I lost all the weight within five months and I've had no trouble keeping it off. But the other thing was without having to commute, you know, it, it allowed me to get in my cardio. As you say, you, you don't have a space for your cardio, you don't get it in. But for me, that that not commute time all of a sudden freed up the, you know, 60 to 90 minutes a day. Mm. Um, but I think it's, I think you're right. I mean, I think this idea of no time and because people f finally 
had to look at what things were and they had, as Mike said too, they had the opportunity to make a change. And people in droves are making See, change. A lot of people are making change. Well, open up this whole world where people, you know, talked about working remotely. It was a concept. Matter of fact, the the company where my wife worked wouldn't even thought about that before the pandemic. No, yeah. they're not going to do it because they thought it wouldn't work. But they were forced, thrust into this work, working remotely thing. And the company as a whole found that people were actually more efficient. Yeah, probably working. Happier working from home so they're like okay when we do come out of this uh, maybe we'll do a a split where you know you come into work a couple three days and you work remotely and things like that unfortunately my wife uh, believed that she loved working from home <laughs> the introvert she is and she's she's very meticulous it's like when she works it's got to be very quiet and even being in a workplace environment people talking so it's like i Too can't much. focus on what i'm doing and she thought it was wonderful that she would be at home quiet be able to really focus on a work and dive into it where she finally said well I, my company is wanting us to come back into the office uh, i'm going to find her a f fully remote job and she did yeah and now she has her dream job working from home right there quiet be able to focus you know she's a data analyst so her whole mind's looking at data and and really focusing so she loves it but it's really opened people's eyes up to the possibilities where people would not have before because they didn't have to. Right. Well, I think, too, you were saying, Sensei, that we we sort of rededicated ourselves to Aikido and we all these new things came out. You were saying the podcast came, this podcast came out. Like, I still can't believe this is, you say this is our 16th episode? No, this will be, uh, this when this one comes out, it'll be 14 or 15. Okay. So that's incredible. Like, to yeah. me, I can't believe we've done 14 or 15 of these. I know the two minute technique videos. We have over almost fifty of those. Fifty, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and you know we we continue to have the newsletter come out. Um, the daily messages come out. Um, we we're, we now have as a dojo, um, a legitimate amount of of content. Well, let me stop you right there. When it comes to the, uh, the daily message, who's we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, of course. Of course. Actually, I mean, since he's doing all this, but I'm just saying like that, that, that it's, it's so amazing to see how like we, this is something that, that you wanted to do for the longest period of time. And it was hard to see the path. Yeah. Through and, it's, it. and it's funny because I look back on my writings from like five to 10 years ago. And I'm like, oh my God, those are horrible. And I look at these ones and I go, oh, these are okay. Right. You know, and that as I look at these ones now, I've done over a hundred of them. Wow. Yeah, I've done over 100 uh, blog messages. Like, oh, crap. Why? That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. And, mm -hmm. you, know, it, you know, coming up with a topic was, is, it, it starts to become difficult. And you're like, in your mind. Start you, running out of material. <laughs> yeah, I start, I start like spying on Watanabe Sensei in class and then hear him say some nugget and write it down and then go, I'm going to write something about that later. <laughs> but like, you know, but that's the thing. Like, you know, um, People go, oh yeah, this this person wants to become an Aikido teacher. Or this person wants to become a Judo teacher, and I'm like, gotta do it now. Well, they're gonna wait till I go. See, there is no time. Right. Don't wait. You know, Furu Sensei said it takes 15 years to become established. Next year, next March, will be the 15th year for us, and I could. It totally rings true. Yeah, it's somewhere between 14 and 16 years, I would imagine. So if you're gonna become somebody, you got to start now. Right, right? it's going to take so much time. It's it takes so much time, and, and and you know one of the things that I learned in the pandemic, which I feel like I did a very poor job doing, is that helping people. That I felt like in the in the beginning of the pandemic we should have helped people more. Hmm. We should have, we said, oh, let's not have a Christmas party. No, we should have had one. Yeah, and then just done it in the parking lot, socially distanced, because people needed that. Yeah, we should have, you know, there's, you know, we should have checked in on each other more. We should have formed, you know, phone trees. They don't do that anymore, but, you know, phone trees yeah, where yeah. You're, you're calling these five, I'm calling, and we just checked up on each other. I mean, I did some stuff with people, but not not everyone. I think, I I do think that that could have been more helpful given that I think people battled a lot of loneliness. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But we as a group, um, this dojo hung together. Um, we had classes. Yeah. Um, when most dojos were closed. Uh, and even though we didn't have 20 people in every class, people that did want to participate at whatever level they felt comfortable, 
had the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I mean, we we try to provide a lot. I mean, we any student that wanted weapons, we just gave them weapons. We didn't charge them. Yeah, they just come down and pull weapons off the rack. And mind you, these weapons we've had for decades, right? So not that not that we shouldn't give them to them because they're old, but that they're they're we've had them since the free sense era, right? Right. We we opened the dojo up to the seniors that they could train whatever they just put your name on the schedule and then you could tr- train by yourself in the dojo. Right. Victor, James Sakata, Terry, Jackie, all these different people uh, trained. When, no, it's incredible when you think about it. It really before is. Before and after class, they trained um, on days we didn't have class. We had classes in the parking lot. We had Zoom classes. We did. We, we tried to think of anything we could think of to keep the group together. Right. To add value to their lives. Not just not just take their money. Oh, we got this guy's money. Don't you know, we I didn't want to just take people's money. Right. I wanted to give them something for their their the donation of their dues. I we digitized Free Sensei's articles. We made videos. We did all these different things so that people would know that we cared, not just about their 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 wallets, right? You know, like there was one dojo uh, one martial arts dojo where, where I live, the teacher has like hundreds of students. And when the pandemic hit, you know, he didn't do anything for them. And then the t- students were were um, quitting in droves, mm. you know. And, you know, there were times he, like someone told me that 50 students quit today. I was like, oh, my God, 50 students. That's, <laughs> oh, I don't know what I, I would have a heart attack. Yeah. And then he was doing stuff where – he would, uh, someone would say, I, you know, I'm going to quit. He would say, okay. And then he'd just keep charging them. And they'd say, hey, remember I told you two, you know, two months ago? That, oh, oh, sorry about that. To try to just keep their money, you know. And then he didn't do any Zoom classes. He didn't send out, he just didn't do anything for them. And then he was upset that the students had quit on him. And you know, But like, it's like, well, what did you expect? And then I thought I was a patient person and a good teacher. And my children have uh disavowed you of this demonstrated or shown me that i am not a patient person and i am a horrible teacher i thought oh i could teach my kids nope i mean just because of the number sure number of hours a day or is the, it the fatigue the frustration and then what do you mean you don't know this well but how come you don't know this it's here in the homework you yeah. <laughs> and then i was just so mad right you know like the other day i got mad at my son because he, he, I said, do you have to know your your nine times tables? And he was like, yes. And then I got all mad because he didn't know them. And then after I got mad, I don't actually have to know them. But you just said that you had to. <laughs> you know, and so I, I learned things that I'm not good at, right? I, you know, I learned that I'm, I really need to manage my health better. Right. I don't, I thought, you know, you're just getting by on your, your, awesome biceps and your good looks, you have to realize like, oh, I really have to think about my own health now. Yeah. How I eat, what I eat, what time I eat. You know, so, I mean, I learned a lot about not so much, even things I learned about myself in a good way, but I learned things I go, oh. Didn't you get, I haven't seen you wear it recently, but didn't you get during the pandemic the, um, Fit, that ring? Fit, that uh, ring? Yeah, with the R ring. I only wear it for bed. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, well, I used to wear an Apple Watch and I used to wear an Aura Fitbit type thing. But the thing is, is that like I'm really good at losing things and I'm not very good with electronics. And then once the pandemic kind of waned a bit and I started seeing patients, I'm not supposed to wear jewelry oh, okay. or a watch. So I, I can't do acupuncture with it and then I can't wear it in class. So, so you're just, just not really wearing just it. Never, re- never really use it, you know, but like it, it was, it, yeah, I mean, seeing my health and in in, reflected in those devices you're like woo that's pretty bad you know i, I realized how ba- how poorly i sleep and so today i'm trying to do all these things to sleep better you know and then during the ins- during the pandemic i i acquired uh, insomnia which i never had before Ugh. where a couple times a week i'll have insomnia you know and i sometimes think it's a it's a function of not um moving enough because I don't move that much because I'm typing or writing or something like that. But then I also tell you guys, don't text me or call me at when the sun's down. Yeah. Because then it causes me to think. And then, oh, I can't sleep at night. I mean, like, this is the craziest thing is to every night I I pray and wish for a good night's sleep. I never used to think about it. I just go, oh, time to go to sleep. Yeah. Done. Yeah, down and Today out. Today I'm all, please. Wow. I just want a good night's sleep so I can do something tomorrow. 
Yeah, you it's know, not, not getting a good night's mass. sleep is really rough. You know, for me, in my whole life, I've been an insomniac <clears throat> my entire since I can remember as a child. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I go to sleep every night praying that I will go to sleep. And I'd say maybe, you know, a fourth of the time mm-hmm. I get to sleep. So, I, I feel for you. It's very, and I think, you know, during the pandemic, I think a lot of people, they were concerned about money. They were concerned about their jobs. They were concerned about their the, future. Well, no, it's something we're not even talking about. They were concerned about getting sick. Yeah. Because- the, the the word out there is is you know that there's you can get the you can get the flu you can get the coronavirus and if you get the coronavirus no one really knows what the percentages are of people who get really sick and die and so yeah. what I've seen a lot of is is that especially in the business world is there is a percentage of people who are don't ever want to go back into society they don't want not just go back to work like they don't want to be in shopping malls they don't want to be in restaurants they yeah. want to do everything from home in Japan in Japanese they call it otaku Otaku? You know, shut-ins. <laughs> shut-ins. You know, but, but I think we have a, a whole new crop of people like that. Well, I think it's also those things that you learn how much of an introvert you really are. And then you're like, I don't want to go to that birthday party. I don't want to <laughs> go to that thing. I don't want to go to f- back-to-school night. I don't rather just sit out and Zoom and look, go watch the back-to-school night with the monitor turned off. Right? <laughs> you realize those things. And, you, you know, and I would say largely most people found it gems in the relationships but some people didn't right right i don't know anybody that broke up in the pandemic but i'm sure they're out there kanye I mean, and um kim yeah me and my wife we we got along fabulously yeah in the pandemic. my we worked. my wife and i was is great it was like getting to hang out with your best friend every day we, were, we enjoyed it had lu- had lunch every, you know yeah. i'd make lunch for her because she'd be working online and you know, I had nothing better to do, so I'd make lunch for her, and we'd have lunch out on the patio. It was a good. It was yeah, my mine is a bodies by pancake, because <laughs> I mean, I probably made pancakes every day for the pandemic. <laughs> oh we'd, my god! We'd wake up, the kids would be like, oh, "We want pancakes," and I'd be like, "Sure." <laughs> right because i never used to make pancakes for my kids i make pancakes and then you aren't you gonna eat pancakes too and then i don't eat before that i did intermittent fasting so yeah right, so there's no pancakes. morning meal yeah and so now they're like aren't you gonna eat pancakes with us and i'm like eh, why, why not? not so i ate a ton of pancakes <laughs> and then you know my wife would be like you're making pancakes again i go yeah why not why not pandemic's gonna end in a month or two <laughs> <laughs> two years later. <laughs> two years later. You know, it looked like Job of the HUD. <laughs> well, it's one of the crazy things about the pandemic is you reminded me that it started in the fall of 2019. And Does anyone feel like they have um, pandemic fatigue? I, I've totally had pan- pandemic fatigue. Told, I mean, I've had pandemic fatigue for at least six months. Six months? Yeah. Where yeah. I just go, I can't handle this. I mean, because I'm- The level of stress? The level of stress and inactivity. Yeah. You know, I'm used to, I have a, I have a stand up job or I'm seeing patients standing up. I'm moving around constantly and now I don't. So right. I'm not moving. And then I taught a ton of Aikido, took a lot of Aikido and I worked out a lot. Now I'm, I'd be lucky if I work out once a day. And so that's why I'm trying to get back on track to working out. Like I did a lot of yoga prior to the pandemic, but yoga on Peloton is okay, but it's not really that motivating. Right. You know, and then. Like I said, I found So you prefer yoga in person classes? I prefer yoga. Yeah. I, there's something about making it through that hour that's easier than making it through an hour on Peloton. Interesting. You know, and that I mean I did it like I said, I did a ton of Peloton yoga. What do you what do you think it is about the difference between uh, is, you're talking about pre recorded Peloton or live pre, Peloton? Pre recorded. Pre recorded. So what do you think it is about pre recorded exercise classes that is not as um it's just not you're not it's not social enough it's like even though you're not talking to them there's an there's a group energy mm. right that the, the class is, goes there's, by. there's a shared yeah. effort amongst everyone where you can just like get up and walk away go to the bathroom and no one's going to know the difference but it feels like as though you're you're required to be there everyone's there everyone's putting in the sweat don't it, give it's up a, don't give up it's a community so I, I think that's the kind of energy you're getting from that, from everyone else, and, and I, feeding and I off think that. That's one of the things that has brought a lot. Like, I mean, we've had so many people join the dojo since the pandemic has slowed we down. We have, we have, and there were, so many of those people have become super dedicated. Yeah, you know, and like, it's because you, we realize that you need other people in your life. You can't just look at a screen and be like, "Hey, Bill, how's it going? Oh, it's going all right." There's, there's, that's. That's something, but it's not enough. Yeah, you need it, to have lunch with them and look them in the eye and hug. So them. what? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, you know, what this do you is think? the hug machine. You know, 
If I don't get that high. machine. <laughs> So what do you, what do you think that what do you think that is that's missing? What it is is it the social factor? That are we just social animals? Um, is it the contact? It's all of that. That it, we yeah. you need to have others connection. Right? You you will run out into the part into the street to save a kid that's going to get hit, hit by a car. Why you don't know that kid? Because it matters that human beings matter. We need each other. Yeah. Right? You'll kick a window in on a burning car, cut your own hands to save this person's life that you don't even know. Yeah. Right? That's the hard part of that. Like, we need each other. And so, Zoom, working from home, Facebook, those things are fine. And people think that, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to they're gonna replace human beings. They, won't, they never will. So, you're because not a big fan of the coming metaverse? It's not going to. Because once you touch someone, it's so different. You can't get a virtual massage. You can't get a virtual <laughs> hug. You, And you, that's why there's so much, I think people are suffering from depression more it's because that interaction that you had that you just don't have anymore yeah. because you're, it's done virtually through a screen, a two-dimensional, one-dimensional screen. Oh, hey, what's up? And then they got the fake background. You're not even wearing pants. You know, it's like <laughs> they, there's something about coming to the dojo and touching people. Yeah. You know, camaraderie. Like, camaraderie. Even if it's rotomochi, rah, you're wrenching on their arm, you 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 interacted with people. And I think you'll never be able to replace that. Yeah, because I can't get over the look when I do that to you and go, uh, and you give me that look. I, I can't live without that. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to edit that out. <laughs> no, it's staying. <laughs> um, I, I like I, I agree with you. I think that um, you know, I've just noticed since I've been at this new firm for the last three weeks, I've been in the office I would say on average like three days a week. Not full days, but three days a week. And people are coming into my office to sit and they'll chat and you know, I'll look at my watch because I bill by the hour, right? But it, but you people are I think they're starved for just yeah. to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people come into this office and they'll sit here for one to three hours. Yeah. Talk to me about the most ridiculous stuff. And I'm just like, uh huh. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see where you're talking. Oh, yeah. Oh, that happened to you. Oh. So when you said you learned other things from about Aikido, was there was there something I when I think about that, I think of like, we went through this, we went through this um sort of arc, right? We we were shut down for a very, very short amount of time. Then we reopened and we did Joe Keto or whatever. Yeah. I can't remember what you called it, where we did basically like weapons work. Yeah, through the pandemic, we only were closed two months. One month here, one month there. Yeah. So we had, we had a pretty aggressive um, schedule. What, what did, was there anything special that you feel as a teacher you learned from having to make that adaptation, especially with Joe Keto? that had the pandemic not happened, you wouldn't have learned from your teaching. Well, one of the things we do now is this modified ukemi thing, where the person doesn't take ukemi, they just back bend or forward bend and right. they walk out of the technique that we now use for all beginners. We never would have done that before. It's sink or swim in here, man. Don't be whip, take the roll, take the hit. Today we go, oh yeah, just, just back walk bend it out. and walk out. Right. Feel the power of the throw and, and walk that way. And that works really, really well. And interestingly enough, the, the new students who have to do that, they really want to learn their okemi because I want to roll out the rest of these folks. And they've really picked it up quickly. Yeah. And, you know, but the thing, I, I think that the single biggest thing I learned in an Aikido sense from the pandemic is, you know what? There isn't just one way. No, and that takes, you know, like I was way less tolerant uh, before the pandemic. Oh, you don't do Aikido like us? Don't call me. Hmm, interesting. You know, and that one of the things that, uh, you know, as we talked about that, like you meet people and they don't have to do Aikido exactly like you because it's not about that. Right. Right. It's it's not about being everyone being exactly the same. The diversity is so much better. You know, the kindness and talking to someone who has blue hair as opposed to the guy who looks exactly like you doing it exactly the same way is not is it doesn't need to be that way. Right. Right. And that you could be tolerant of other people as and as you talked about in the other podcast about being on it, it's like a number line. You got someone who's here and someone who's here. They're all on the same continuum. Right. And that if we could just all work together somehow, right? Because this dojo would have not made it through the pandemic had we not worked together. Right. No, we, that's true. We, we worked together, we made it through. You know, there are students that came that didn't want to come. 
but came because they wanted to help the dojo. Right. Right. There are students that were afraid to come, but they still came because they wanted to help the dojo. Right. So it's those types of things that it, it wasn't how badass your Iri Minage was that saved the dojo. Right. It was the kindness and compassion and sacrifice Commitment. of the students that saved this dojo. Other dojos folded. And, you know, the thing is, if your dojo folded, I feel sorry for you. And But the hard part is it's going to be so hard to make a comeback. Right. To start over. Right. Yeah. Because anybody who said there's, they're going to be back may not come back. And then you got to start from zero. Yeah. We get to start from eight. You know, we don't have to start from zero. But Yeah. I picked up bicycling while I was out on the pandemic. And I really love it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like coming back anymore. Or I moved away. Right. Yeah. But that's the hard part that, like, you think... You think it's about the technique, and it, it, and, it, and it is, but it's not. Yeah. It's the people. It's the kindness of people. You know, when we need, we need donations, people donated. Yeah. Two you times. Know? Yeah, mm -hmm. twice. We had two years two, in a row. Two donation drives, right? You know, Jesse Mon, thank you very much. She donated to this podcast. And I didn't even know that was a thing. I was like, <laughs> wait, what the hell you is could this? Do, you could do that? You could do, <laughs> how did she do that? You know, but like, it's the kindness of people to do that. Right. They don't have to do that. They could have spent their money other places. You know, people, someone like Brad Whitaker, he spent, he paid through the whole pandemic. And then he goes, you know what? I, you know, I'm, I'm going to withdraw, stop being a student there. But he, he didn't come through the whole pandemic. He lives far away, but he still paid to help us stay open. And like the, those type of things, it's like you go, how, how bad was your eating binaga, man? It's like that. It's not about Hidi Minagi, Kodagashi, the techniques. And that's why we were talking in this last podcast before about what is this, what is it all about? Peace? Yeah, that's it. That, the, we, can't, we can't make it without each other. Right. Santiago and I, Omar Sensei, I believe that we, he and I became closer texting each other. Oh my gosh, this thing's happening. What's going on with you? Hey, how do we do this thing? Oh, I know. All right, good luck. Stay, you know, stay healthy, brother. Yeah, like you, you, you grew closer to these people, you know, you know. So I mean, it. You, the thing I really learned is like it's this diversity that's really, really important that we have to be accepting and tolerant because it is there is nothing left after the physical. You have to have something left. You 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 have to have that camaraderie, commitment, sacrifice, friendships, all those things. Those are and those are all big wins in the in in the end of the day. I, I had a sort of maybe just a, a, a this is going to sound very low level after this discussion we just had, but do you, like, historically in our dojo, um, weapons classes were, I mean, we didn't always have weapons classes. Well, but why didn't we have weapons classes? Because <laughs> the people teaching weapons class had very low frustration tolerance. Levels. Right, no, of course. Oh, yeah, but but yeah. what I was going to ask is, <laughs> yes. What I was going to ask, though, is do you, did you see, like, as a side benefit to the pandemic that our students and all of us got to practice with weapons um, in a way that we never would have had there been no pandemic? I mean, perhaps. Perhaps. I don't really know. Um, you know, because we did just do the traditional, all right, everybody, we're all going to do the 31 Joe Kata. Right. You know, like uh, Watanabe Sensei and I had to be very creative of the things that we created, the Joe with Aikido, Aikido with Joe, not not because so it much. seems to me like like that that's a very high level w weapons work that some dojos, including ours, might never have taught. Maybe, yeah. I don't. I don't really know. I mean, I, I would imagine because we did it for so long, people got a gain to proficiency, right? But then that proficiency, if you don't keep these skills, are perishable. Right. You know? Yeah. And what, you know, like, there's people that talk about like, oh, this person is going to become an Aikido teacher. And I'm like, when's the last time that person, she did Aikido? Oh, she hasn't done Aikido for 15 years. And I think. Not going to happen. How's it going to happen? Right. She's not going to even know. I mean, all the things that you forget on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, yeah. Hands like this. Foot's like that. Oh, yeah. That's how you do this technique. I forget them and I teach Aikido or do Aikido every week. Yeah. I call Watanabe Sensei and I'm like, hey, man. uh how do you do this one thing? And he goes, oh, shoot, I don't remember either. And then, like, we get on the mat and we're you both figure like. figure it out. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. And then we, like, we do it. But, like, there's a second or two where we're both like, uh, 
was it Yokominuchi or <laughs> Rotatori? Right. I go, I dude, I could have sworn it was Rotatori. He's like, oh, I think it was Yokominuchi. Well, I, I told you last week, I was restringing the uh, thread through my sewing machine, and I pulled the thread out, the other thread, because I want to put some other thread in there, and all of a sudden, I'm like, trying to figure out, trying to remember oh, no. how to oh, run no. it through all the little things. And you did it the whole pandemic. And I, I did it, like I could do it in my sleep, but I hadn't used a machine in a couple, a couple months, and then boom, yeah, whoa, that's how quickly skills knowledge evaporate. and skills yeah. start to just. And that's why I say that there's no time left. You got, you want to be good at Aikido? Start now. Don't wait. Ah, oh, you know, in two weeks, two months, when I get my next paycheck, don't. There is no time left. So one one thing along those lines of the no time left, start now group. There's there's two groups of people, and we don't have to say who they are, but I want to shout out to them because this is like the end of the year podcast. Uh, I think that we've been really lucky. Uh, some would use the word blessed as a as a school um, in this in this day and age, which is very different than our old school. We have a really great women's contingent right now. Yeah, and, we have probably maybe close to 50-50. Mm, it's, it's getting there. It's getting close. It's getting close. Which is amazing. Yeah. Which is absolutely, for, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. When this dojo was a one or two girls dojo. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I think that we should, we can look back on that as an achievement through the pandemic that we've been able to diversify yeah. the, the, the group. And then also that we have some people that have started Aikido when they're over 50. Yeah. Who are who are pounding it out pretty hard, training at a very high level, um, and for me, you know, now being fifty four, almost fifty five next year, every time I see a student who's who's starting Aikido when I'm right about now, and I feel how I feel in the morning, or I work a <laughs> long day, and I'm like, man, I need rest, and I think about someone starting the journey of Aikido, I'm like, man, that person's high level. Yeah. Very high level. Yeah, That's no, hardcore, I mean, baby. I was talking with Doi Sensei and another student yesterday, and we were talking about like the dojo has to be about saving lives and not taking lives. Yeah. If we focus solely on taking lives, beating the crap out of each other and all that type of stuff, it is so empty. Yeah. It has to be about saving lives. And the life you save is not just your own, it's other people. You look at the, the person next to you, look them in the eye. Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah. I mean, this pandemic has taught us how valuable the other is. Right. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Hey, how's but I going? really take inspiration. Like, yeah. I, I'm finding that I personally take inspiration from our student body because they're people who might not fit in in another school, but they're here at our school, which has a reputation for being a rough place. And they're, I mean, people are really flourishing. They're training really hard. Um, and I, I mean. Some of these people, I look at them and I'm like, I, I don't know that I would be able to do what they're doing. I mean, I just. Yeah. But, but you know, that's the thing that we're trying to cultivate today that's different right. than the old days. Right. In Free Sense's day, there was only one way. Right. He had a lot of Ichiro, right? One way. Today, it's like, do you try. Right. And I try to encourage people, you know, because I felt as a student my whole career, I always felt, um, I felt like an other. Right. You know, that one time Furu Sensei had a meeting and everyone was going to be Soto Deshi, Uchi Deshis, right? So these people are going to be Deshis. You got you guys are all Deshis. You're going to be doing this. Here are your responsibilities. Great. The next day, the list came out. My name wasn't on it. So. And then my name's not on it, but I still had the same responsibilities. No title, all the work. Mm -hmm. And then because I didn't have the title, a lot of the other people just – you know, crapped on you, crapped on me, and gave me their work because they have the title and you don't, and you have to do what I tell you to do. And I was like, "Screw what? that!" Yeah, right. And I'll that, see you on the mat. And that today, <laughs> I tried to make things way more, you know, a fair, a fa fair and inclusive. Yeah. Hey, you're, you know, um, if you couldn't roll, they just beat it into you. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Let's let's bring these people along. Bust out the big, thick, six-inch red mat. Roll on this first. Try this thing out. No, no, don't worry about it. You know, we have guys, that, like you said, starting in their 60s. It's so we incredible. Have a, we have a blind student. We have all these things that in the old days. Never would have happened. If, uh, you know, um, the student who is, you know, visually impaired would have knocked on the door in the past. I don't know if Sensei would have allowed him in. Sensei would have said, you know what? Too much not, work. Yeah, too difficult. Too much work, not enough reward. We don't have time for that. 
Yeah. And I think that's sad because we, you know, the, we, we really try to work with people and, t- and get people to, you know, move their bodies and do all this stuff and find themselves. And I think that's kind of coming out today, too, is that people are starting to feel more accepted. Oh, you're going to go get right now <laughs> across the parking lot. There's what, six or seven students having beers at the brewery next door. Right. I don't care that they do that. But for instance, you'd be like, nope. Yeah. You know, but like that's that thing Like you know, we, you really learn in this pandemic that there's no time that people are very valuable and precious, that do you really want to be a jerk about it all the time? You know, like you learned so much, so many things, and it took a worldwide pandemic that's killing people to make you see the light. Yeah, that's the, that's the hard part, is that we had to have all this suffering for people to have a better life. Yeah, you know, as, as they say, they, that person, the, the, they die so that we can live. You see this sad story, and this person passes away, you could, you could just say, oh, that's, you know, I feel sorry for that person and walk away. Or you can internalize it and think, man, there's no time left. Man, you got to be careful what we say to each other. Man, you're like, you know, do I want to live this life? And so that's the hard part. Like today is like, what is a dojo really about? Taking lives, teaching people to take lives or really trying to save lives? Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, now that the year is kind of coming to an end, we're closing in on two years, was past two years of the pandemic. Is, is there anything that, I mean, you, Sensei, or you, Mike, that, that is, is there anything that you take as, as something that you want to try for the new year after everything you've learned from the pandemic and this last year of training? Is there anything that's new that you want to try in 2022? It's not that I knew that I want to try. It's just that I want to do things better. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to, get, when my Japanese school opens up again, I'm going to study. But I'm going to train or learn there, but I'm really going to study. Not, I so it's study about, again. it's about commitment. Commitment, you know, or same thing with my calligraphy teacher. When he comes back from Japan and they reopen the school, yes, I'm going to apply myself. I want to apply myself. You know, I'm trying to apply myself more physically. Like every day when I walk my kids to school, I try to walk for an hour. Mm, you know, I'm good. trying to improve my health, but not imp- see that that's the problem. I had one of the things I discovered in the pandemic as well as I was doing all these things for health reasons, but from a negative place, from a place of self hate. I mm. did intermittent fasting because I have the will to do it. And then right. I, when I got hungry, I was like, don't you even think about it, you wimp. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm a bam, run the eye. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not hungry. Right. You know? <laughs> or I, I train, I did cardio. A lot, and then the whole time I'm like, "Don't you give up, wimp!" And right. now I try not to do that. I try to think to myself, you know, I'm feeling kind of tired. My ankle's hurting. I'm not going to push through. Right. I'm just going to. This is a this is a good place to stop. But before I'd be like, "What ankle?" You know, and like <laughs> today, the other the other day, like this, I was I was walking, and some guy wa- I was doing some construction. He's like, "Aren't you supposed to be running?" Oh. And I was like, "No, I'm not supposed to be running." But in my mind, I'm like, I'm supposed to be running, right? So I, I used to view my health from a health standpoint, from a self hatred standpoint, right? Where I was constantly berating myself for being out of shape, overweight, and all these things. And that today I realized, like, oh, that's not healthy, right? So when I, if I do intermittent fasting once or twice a week, I try to do it from a healthy place, right? Not a place where I'm like, you better not eat that, chubby. <laughs> well, that 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 ties in with our pre our, our recently our previous podcast about um, the the one's attitude about how you do a technique or how you practice. Um, I mean, I I know for me, um, you know, ending now the second year of the pandemic, uh, I think that the word that keeps coming to my mind is kindness. It's you know, it's so easy to get angry. When people are stressed, it's so easy to get angry when you're not getting what you want. It's so easy to get angry um, when someone cuts you off on the freeway, and but you don't realize like all it's this quote. Um, I think it's Marcus Aurelius. It says, "It's not the causes of anger that are the biggest tragedies. It's the results of anger that are the ones that really get you." So it's like you know you get angry, then the guy cuts cuts you off, pulls a gun, and shoots you, and I think about like during the pandemic, like we we had to 
as you say, we really had to pull together as a group and we had to watch out for each other. And I think going into the new year, um, you know, we have we have an opportunity to, you know, be at an even higher level uh, than we already are. Um, but it's it's very difficult because I think that part of the reset, there's a there's a component of the, re- of, the of the great reset which is selfish, because we're all all of us are doing things for ourselves. Mm. Uh, you know, we're getting a better job, we're we're making more money, we're doing something. And a lot of these things are, and I, I'm the first to admit that I'm at the top of that list doing that. Um, so I'm not trying to throw stones, but you know I think that it's going to the new year, trying to, you know, understand that that the world is a very difficult place, uh, and kindness is is we especially if we can bring that into our training will be very beneficial. Mm. How about you, Mike? What have you? What about? What is your? What are your goals for twenty twenty two? Well, what I found through the the pandemic is you talked about not moving, so working on the leather work, doing all these things, sitting, being solitary. When we came back in here, we're we're stretching. You know, we do the one where you're you know pressing yourself up and looking to the ceiling. I'm like, oh my, my feel abs stiff. were so tight. I'm like, I've never felt that before. And then you know, being my age, I'm I'm realizing that. If you don't take care of yourself, yeah, it it creeps up on you like a thief in the night, and then one day you're like, oh, whoa, yeah, like all it all falls down on you like in one day, like it's creeping, 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 and then yeah, it all one like, day all of a sudden it coalesces, and you're like, ah, you you can't move. Uh, am I am I you know my my abductor magnus was all tight. I'm like, oh, man, and all these hip flexors and you know all all these things. I'm like, whoa. And it's, it's funny how quickly all those creep up on you. But I realize that if you don't take care, you know, you have this conversation quite a bit, Sensei, when he's talking about you know, we have to take care of this, I call it the combat chassis or whatever you want to call it, your vehicle. But if you don't take care of it, uh, it's it's not going to take you to the finish line. Well, we're all three of us are in the... We're in, in the 50s. In the 50 zone, which is where things, if they're going to start falling apart, they start to fall apart when yeah. you're in your 50s. And what he was talking about earlier is like, because I was like, wind sprints, you know, all these just brutalized. And I realized, you know what, that's not the the form of physical training I should be doing at my age because it's just going to exacerbate or c- create more injuries. I have to reinvent how I train in order to keep my... Uh, my physical conditioning up because otherwise I'm putting myself um, more susceptible to being injured. And then what did you say? You get injured. It's at least what, six months? Yeah. At least six months where when I was younger, heal up like that. But now it's like, I I feel like when I was younger, I was always injured. Like there was always some, something that was injured in Aikido. They seem more catastrophic to me. Oh, my knee is all messed up today. I'm like, Oh, my knee's a little bit hurt. Right. You know, but like, that's the hard part. It's like, you know, I had this dream a little while back and the dream was that I got divorced. Mm -hmm. And then in the dream, it showed me that you have to have balance because my life is going to go two different directions. Both of them not, not good because my life has no balance. So the thing I really think about that I'm trying to work on in my own life is to have balance in every sector of my life, mental, emotional, spiritual, Relationship wise, financial, yeah. you know, all those things have to have balance and physical have to have this balance, right? If you're if a catastrophic incident happens and your health your health is no good, it could kill you. Yeah. If a if your something happens with your finances and then your health is no good, it could hurt you. Something happens with your health, your finances are bad, it could hurt you. Right. All, so you have to have balance. What does it mean to do Aikido, right? You know, an Aikido person, practitioner should have really good balance. Yeah. But what does that really mean? A balance is just physical balance? No. Physical, financial, spiritual, emotional. Um, <clears throat> Relationship. Relationships, financial. Because any one of those things, which is out of balance, could cause the whole thing to go into the toilet. Yeah. Right? And so this dream ca- caused me to realize, like, oh, you have to have balance. And all the each one of those things, not just really strong financial, bad f- health, really strong health, bad emotional, 
And that's, my Aikido is really good. Yeah. Well, and that's really hard because it's, certainly the three of us coming up in the dojo, there was balance was never an encouraged. No. It was like train every day, train two to three hours, train when you're tired, train when you're injured. In yeah. fact, just train and be quiet. And and if it affects the rest of your life, or even you know, I can say in my own job, it's like the the message is work as many hours as you can until you drop. Um, you know, I think that we live in a very unbalanced uh, society where um, you know we only seek out balance. This is why I think you know the pandemic or the Great Reset is the way it is. Is it's the first time that people had time. Yeah. And they're like, and and they they really started to think about things in life, um, but I mean, I know that w it's very interesting you say bringing about balance because I look back on most of my life, and I don't know that I could I could count on less than one hand the number of people who would say to me, you know, you're excessive here, or that excessiveness is going to have, like, if you push push here, it's going to pop up over here. Yeah, people don't talk about that. They're like, no, you, because the society is not conditioned. It's work hard. Live fast and die young. Yeah. Right. But and then, then just leave a scorched earth behind you. <laughs> yeah. But that's not true. That is not the way of Aikido. Right. Right. The way of Aikido teaches us to have balance in everything that we do. So then every every aspect, emotional, spiritual, physical, you know, et cetera, they each have to have their own balance. Because if each one of them are balanced, when there's a catastrophic incident in any other of the you can still adjust it bolsters you it can hold you those wins things can hold and you i up. think you know for someone like myself i you know i i find it's very hard for me to be balanced like i have to actually like yeah say to myself oh you know um don't get up at five in the morning today um you know sleep an extra 35 minutes uh because you know it's my nature to grind at work no matter what and then you say to yourself well you can't do that every day um, cause you know, like my friend, you know, had a heart attack this year and he's our age and he was the first one of my group, um, to get s sick for the first time. And that was kind of my eye opening during the pandemic of someone to say to myself, like, yeah, that that's what happens when you're not yeah. careful. Well, being balanced is a conscious effort. It's, if you don't focus on it. Stuff gets happen. out of control yeah. fast. Well, like you think about Furu Sensei. I mean, everyone always asks one of the questions that people ask me a lot is, "How did Furu Sensei get so heavy?" Yeah. Now, Furu Sensei's natural body, he's five six and like one forty. Yeah. You yeah, see him when I've he was seen, young. Yeah, I've seen pictures yeah, of him when he's, he's young. He's felt, like, right? Yeah. yeah. I can't even. I can't even fit into his clothes. Like I put a. Oh, well, this is a nice suit jacket. Oh, it's too tight. Yeah. But one, the thing that happened is that in the late, late 80s, within the course of like a year, 18 months, his everyone parents. in his immediate family died, his parents yeah. and grandparents. And then he nursed them to their death. <sighs> he quit his job, took out loans, nursed them to their death. And when the last person was gone, he got in a car accident and hurt his back and was laid up in the hospital. So here he is. Alone. Grandparents. Parents dead, all alone in this hospital with a hurt back. When he came home, all his relatives had supposedly put tags on all the furniture and things that they wanted. Mine, mine, I want this, I want that. And he was so upset, he just locked the door and no one was allowed to come in there. And his only fallback was to go live in the dojo. And then he's sitting in the dojo and you know how it is. You order a pizza, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm only going to eat half. And then, oh my gosh, you ate the whole thing. And then, you know, you know what? I'm only going to live in this dojo for a couple months. A couple months, a couple years, a couple decades. But the thing, the, the point of this whole story is that he had no balance. He yeah. had no financial balance, no physical balance, no relationship balance. And so there was nothing he could leverage to pull himself out of the hole. So all he did was just live in the back of the dojo, become heavier, more depressed, and then it, it killed him. Yeah. So understanding that is that you have to have balance in, in as many aspects of your life as you can so that yeah. you can leverage them to pull you out of the hole when a catastrophic incident happens, especially as you get older. And so yeah. that's the thing is that like, you know, that's one of the th main things I learned in this in this pandemic is you got to have balance because if all those sectors are out of balance and a catastrophic incident happens – it could pull the whole thing. And at some yeah. point, a catastrophic thing will happen. I mean, that's the nature of life is, is right. that everyone has catastrophe 
at but you'll some have point. the resilience to yeah. come back from that if you have other aspects of your life and but if you have nothing bolstering you it's as easy as a boop yeah. and you're going over yeah so you know that's the thing I, I really think about when when I think about what I learned in the pandemic you know I learned how to do a, a, a Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro but the more most important lesson was to have balance yeah have balance in life what was the hardest thing about the pandemic for you? I mean, there was a point where it was really hard because I was doing so much for the dojo that I felt like I neglected my health, my relationships, mm -hmm. and my financial stuff. And then, you know, I've talked to you about that now. Yeah. So, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. And then that's uh, subjective, right? The hardest part is the loneliness because there were people I thought, this is my friend. Oh, not my friend. This person is not not my friend. No, definitely not my friend. You know that mm. there was a sense of loneliness and depression that I go, oh, I didn't know I had that, and then now I go, oh, gotta start. I got to pull myself out of this hole. So I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I I resonate with that. I think that when I look back on it, the period from January to August of this year, I was in a low. Like I didn't know it. You had, you had pandemic fatigue. I had pandemic fatigue. Yeah. Like I was like- Because I had the same thing, same time. I was like, God, man, this is just getting me- so, And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about it consciously, but I wasn't working as hard as I could have at work. You know, I, I didn't feel as enthusiastic. And, you know, and then some positive changes came through. And then once I saw through the change how I'd been behaving before, I was like, oh, man. Yeah. I was depressed. And you could see how something like Fru Sensei- a s six months becomes six years. Yeah. And then, oh, wh oh whoa. Yeah. And then you got to make a comeback. You know, and so, I mean, there's so much that was learned. So many things, you know, good and bad. You know, I learned who my friends were, who my friends aren't. This person I thought would back me, oh, not going to back me. Oh, that's harsh. So, we're on the, we're at the end of the year. Um, This is kind of, for, for all of us, kind of a, a thought that I've had is, what, what what do we do if um, it doesn't go back to normal? Like, what do we do if we're we're in the mask vaccine mandate universe for the next foreseeable future? Well, I mean, so let's say let's change it just a slightly and say, what if nothing changes from the way it is right now? Right. Then there's not there's if nothing changed, if everything you're doing right now and the mandates they have right now are the same, same. for the rest of our lives. You just have to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Right? We, if we've learned anything from this, is we've always figured out ways to overcome. Yeah. So whatever comes our way, we already know. Okay, we overcame this. We overcame that. It, it it's not a far stretch to go. We'll overcome the next one. And you know, this is a martial art, right? A martial art doesn't care if it's a big guy, short guy, fat guy, skinny guy, sh big woman, tall woman. You got to move. You gotta, so you so what got you're saying, but both of you are saying is. If, in fact, it turns out that the future is as bad as it is now or worse, that's just the nature of training, and you yeah. just got to accept it. You have to overcome whatever adversity comes your way. The adversity is your teacher, right? And then you have to you will have to overcome. Do not succumb. Overcome. Well, I think that's a good place to stop. I like that. How that far, was a very, how far that was are we? That extremely motivating uh, ending there. So uh, thank you for watching our podcast or listening for this la this first season first year and we look forward to the next one thank you for watching and listening thank you very, thank much. You very much